in many ways, this was a long time coming. Soleimani had the blood of countless American and coalition servicemen on his hands. Uh, he was working, as we know, to continue to thwart uh, America's uh, foreign security policy, as well as continue to do what he's done so successfully for the Islamic Republic, which is to bait and bleed America and America's regional partners and allies in the Middle East in countless conflict zones. So at the same time that the U.S. and Iran were at loggerheads in many theaters of conflict in the Middle East, be it Iraq, be it Afghanistan, be it Syria, be it Yemen, the connective glue between Iran and its proxy network was this man, Qasem Soleimani. So it is no stretch of the imagination to say Iran has lost its military mastermind. Mm. And Betham, this, of course, raises the question of how will Iran respond, because we've already heard comments coming from Iran. They consider him a martyr. We've heard comments from the former Iranian guard chief on Twitter talking about the fact that he wants to see revenge. The fear across the region now will be any attacks of retaliation. What should we be watching out for? Well, really, since May 2019, Iran has stepped up not just its rhetoric, but its actions against U.S. interests and security and the interest and security of U.S. partners and allies, particularly as it relates to global oil sales and shipping and things of that nature. So I would expect that trend to continue. Um, the current commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, he does have a lot of bark, but he also does have a lot of bite. Uh, technically, he uh, oversaw Soleimani, even though Soleimani could technically report to Iran's supreme leader, who also is the commander-in-chief of that country. Mm. I would expect a lot more of the same. Uh, 2020 is going to be a year where all of those hotspots we mentioned, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, uh, and of course the Persian Gulf, are already hotspots in the game of U.S. Iran and strategic competition. So if the Iranians want to inflame that now, proliferate more weapons, test more weapons, uh, take out American drones, probably do rocket and mortar and missile attacks on American facilities, they would likely use the death of Soleimani as this excuse. The question is, if Iran's strategists are really thinking, would they go into battle without their foremost military mastermind at the helm? And Benham, this is Christina. Will they go into battle? I think right now it's, it's high risk, high reward for the regime. Rhetoric is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for them in these early hours. It's early morning in Baghdad right now. Let's wait and see how things play out in that country because Iraq is going to be center stage in this drama because that's where he was reportedly killed. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.